In the words of Ned Stark, winter is coming. And to keep you warm and dry through that winter, today we're going to show you how to wax a cotton jacket and how to make the wax to do it. Hello, welcome to English Country Life. Welcome to the workshop and welcome to how to wax a jacket. Although to be fair, the technique works just as well for heavy duty canvas leggings, for pushing through brambles, for hats, for gloves, and even for bags to wear over your shoulder in the country that you want kept dry. This technique is really useful. This is a Barber Northumberland that I bought for 20 quid because the waterproofing had worn out. I made up my own wax, I re-waxed it. It's as good as new. These kind of jackets can get handed down from grandparent to parent to child, and they have been. Yes, you may have to reline it. Yes, you may have to re-waterproof it, but it goes on and on. Now it's undeniable that modern Gore-Tex is a brilliant fabric, or these sort of waterproof breathable fabrics. But after a few years, the membranes tend to delaminate and the garment doesn't retain waterproof. With these kind of cotton wax jackets, you can fix them, you can stitch up holes, you can put new linings in, and you can re-waterproof them when necessary. And they are a fabulous, versatile, long life garment. And that's what we're all about. That sort of sustainability aspect and looking after it yourself. So today I'm gonna to show you how I make up the wax to re-wax a jacket and the technique for applying that wax. Before we get into the making, Let's talk a little bit about what a wax jacket is. This one is a barber. They're almost kind of universal in the British countryside. Everyone from the Lord of the Manor to the gamekeeper will have one, and those who haven't got one have probably got a knockoff version of one somewhere. But it's not just a British thing. If it was in Australia, they'd be the dries a bone cattleman coats. In America, Filson tin cloth. They're all wax jackets made in much the same way. Why? They're very, very durable. They will shrug off scratches from barbed wire and thorns and stinging nettles and stuff like that in a way that modern synthetic Gore-Tex type coats cannot. You get one of them and you snag it on a bit of barbed wire, it will rip. And actually there's a difference between being out in the country for a walk and being out in the country to work eight, 10 hours a day, climbing over fences, pushing through brambles and all of that sort of stuff. And in that sort of an environment, in a tough, hard working environment, you need a durable coat. And wax jackets are brilliant for that. How do they work? Well, when you make cotton, you weave it and there's a warp and a weft. There's horizontal and vertical intertwined threads. And that mesh acts like the glass fibre mesh in fibreglass. So when you melt the wax into it, the cotton forms the flexible skeleton and the wax goes into it and provides the waterproofing, like the resin in fibreglass. And you can top that wax up whenever you need to. Now, once you know that, if you ever need a cheap, durable, waterproof coat, Go to your local army surplus shop, get a cotton heavy jacket, make up some of the wax I'm going to show you how to make, apply it, and you'll get a really good waterproof jacket for very little money. And while you're there, get some sort of cotton satchel. We used to use gas mask bags when I was a kid. And wax that. Absolutely brilliant, right? Put your sandwiches in it, put your tools in it, put your cartridges in it, and when you're out for a day, they'll all be safe and dry. Right, let's show you how to make up the wax to wax a coat. This is the wax I made up to re-wax my barber. I made plenty at the time, cast it into blocks so I'd have more if I ever wanted to redo it. It's 90% paraffin wax and 10% beeswax. And when it's set, it's hard as a rock. I wanted my barber to be a big, tough, thunderstorm, bucketing down with rain kind of jacket. I didn't want any kind of delicacy about it. Sometimes though, with other garments, you're gonna want a lighter finish. And that's what we're gonna make today. So if you want it really thick 
and tough, but almost feels a bit cardboardy and inflexible. Mostly paraffin wax, a little bit of beeswax. This is the coat I'm going to re-wax today. It's a dryser bow. It's an Australian coat. Brilliant things. And they have a double layer, like a cape, over the shoulders. But it's a lighter cotton than my 8-ounce silk oil barber. And if I use the same hard wax that I used on my barber, it, the coat would end up feeling a bit cardboardy. So I'm going to use a slightly softer and more flexible wax on this coat, which belongs to our friend Claire, so that when she wears it, it's not like wearing a suit of armour, but it's still lovely and waterproof. The mix I used on the barber, 90% paraffin wax, 10% beeswax. Very hard. For a softer mix, I'm going to use 40% paraffin wax, and if you don't know, paraffin wax is candle wax. I'm going to use 40% beeswax and 20% mineral oil. And that mineral oil, when mixed and blended with the waxes, will make it softer and more flexible. You can probably see I'm using pelleted waxes here. You can buy them like that. It makes them much easier to weigh out. But don't worry if you've only got hard wax. Just grate it with a cheese grater. Honestly, you can get perfectly good paraffin wax just grating a normal household candle mineral oil well in the uk this is sold as johnson's baby oil but i'm sure it's available in all other countries as well beeswax from your local beekeeper or from your own hives and again refine it and grate it let's show you how to combine them in order to melt together oils and waxes I use a system called a double boiler. It's a saucepan with boiling water in the bottom and another vessel on top in which the oils and the wax go. The top vessel is heated only by steam and cannot get above 100 centigrade, the boiling point of water. If you overheat oils and waxes, they can burst into flames. It's a heck of a safety issue, a bit like a chip pan catching fire. Using a double boiler, means that that can't happen. To get it going then, we turn on the gas and we get the water up to the boil. Once we've got a good rolling boil, all we have to do is pop on the top vessel, put into that vessel the oil and the waxes, gently melt them together. Here we go then, mineral oil. Paraffin wax. Already starting to melt. And the beeswax. And I'll just scrape out the remains of them with a skewer. I'm just using a metal skewer to stir gently as the waxes dissolve into the oil. And there we have it, all fully dissolved. Now we can turn off the heat and we'll pour that into some moulds to set. The moulds I'm using are silicon moulds that I normally use for soap making. You can use anything. Just be sure, obviously, that it's not something that is going to melt when you put warmed oil and wax into it. Now remember that this material is only at 100 centigrade, so if boiling water doesn't melt your mould, neither will the oil and wax. An old Tupperware pot is absolutely fine. You could use, honestly, almost anything. Doesn't even matter what shape it is, because ultimately you're just gonna rub it on your coat. The wax takes round about an hour to set firm. Probably more if you make a massive block, but in these kind of bar of soap sized blocks, I find an hour is absolutely perfect. 
from a soft silicon mold like this it'll just turn out if you use something like a tupperware pot i would suggest dip the pot in warm water for a few seconds and that'll just free the wax and let it turn out easily and that's how we make the wax you end up with something looks like a bar of soap really how do we apply it well that's equally simple get your cloth on a hard surface crayon the wax on and then melt it in with indirect heat what do i mean by indirect heat well not an iron put an iron on it firstly you're never going to use your iron for any other process ever again secondly it's probably too hot and you're going to risk the wax burning and those kind of problems i use a hot air gun now i generate a lot of hot air but not as much as this baby and this is a great one because it's got adjustable temperature so you can turn the heat up or down and just get the wax to melting point i appreciate not everybody's got a hot air gun and if you haven't i've seen it done with a fan heater and it seemed to work but it was a bit cumbersome good hair dryer will do the job brilliantly let's have a look see how it works when we bought a new ironing board i kept the old ironing board for just this sort of a project I'm suspecting you haven't got an old ironing board kicking about and a barn to do this in, so any hard surface will do. Your workbench, an old table like I've got behind me, your kitchen counter, but if you're going to do that, just put something down to protect the surface before you do the project. Take your bar of wax and lightly crayon over the garment, working it well into the seams. I'll show you a close-up in a minute so that you can see this more clearly. But you need to crayon all over one area of the garment so with a sleeve I lay it very flat along the seams and I do one side and then I do the other side and I'll rub on the wax all the way over paying particular attention to any area where moisture might get in like the seam along here and the seam there and you can actually see it as the wax goes on that the color of the garment changes once you've done that Take your hot air gun or your hair dryer or your fan heater or whatever you're using, turn it on and melt the wax on. I'll turn the gun off for a moment because obviously the noise tends to rather upset the microphone, but you can watch the wax soak in to the cloth. And according to how much wax you put on, whether you put it on thickly or thinly, as well as the makeup of the wax that we talked about earlier, you can get more or less wax into the garment and more is not always best because you put too much in it does end up like a suit of armor my barber's done like that very deliberately as a real foul weather garment but start with a little try it you can always add more and it only takes minutes to completely re-wax the garment as soon as i'm happy that i've covered every area with the wax i'll turn on the hot air gun give it a few seconds to warm up and then melt the wax on Once I've melted the wax on, I'm going to inspect the sleeve and I can see there's an area or two where there's still a lighter colour showing. Well, that's fine. Give it another bit of wax, another bit of heat, because some areas need more re-waxing than others, particularly the high wear areas on the jacket. For example, the cuffs, the collar and over the shoulders. I've taken a break from waxing the back of the jacket because I just wanted you to see this. Look at the colour difference from this side to that. This side has been re-waxed and has had the wax melted in. I've yet to do this bit. And you can see how much wax is sat in these fibres and how much more waterproof this part will be than that part. And there it is. One fully re-waxed, re-waterproof coat that will hopefully keep Claire comfortable and dry for many years to come. That's the bar I used. 
you probably see it just about, just a little nubbing left. We've got one full bar left. So it's taken about 100 grams to re-wax that coat. I've made 200 because I can slip a bar in the pocket of the coat when we give it back to Claire. Next time it wants to re-wax, she's got the materials at hand to do the job herself. If you're enjoying this kind of content, can you spare us five seconds for a thumbs up down below? And if you want to see more of these sort of small holder, make do and mend, self-reliance type recipes, please let us know in the comments and we'll do more of them over the winter. And if that's what you want to see, hit the subscribe button, the bell next to it, and you'll hear every time we upload new content. But whatever you do, come back and see us soon. Take care.